Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop and today we're going to talk a little bit about laser enclosures and specifically we're going to be taking a look at the iKeer E2 enclosure that you can pair up with their K1 series of lasers. Uh, a lot of us have worked with open frame dialed lasers and they're great, but for safety's sake you really should consider having them in an enclosure to both help provide better eye protection uh, from errant laser beams, as well as really containing that smoke and vapors and the dust and debris that's created when you're laser cutting and laser engraving items. So we're gonna take a look at this enclosure, how it works with this laser, some of the features of it, and uh, we'll also compare that to some of my DIY builds to kind of give you some thought process around, do you buy the commercial unit or do you spend the time and the money to build one of your own because there are pluses and minuses to both. So if that's something you're interested in, want to find out more, stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. First and foremost, just wanted to get it out there. This was sent to me by IKEA. I actually asked them about it due to a viewer request wondering my impression of this enclosure. And I thought, hey, I've got the laser. We've reviewed it in the past. Let's see how it pairs with this enclosure. But then also talk a little bit about the features of uh, kind of a commercially available one like this versus some of my DIY units. So that's why we're jumping into this today. Thank you, IKEA, for sending this out. Um, they're not sponsoring this video or anything. They just provided the equipment for me to kind of do this comparison. So let's jump really quickly into some of the features and we'll talk about the build. Overall, this is basically a metal and acrylic frame. So you've got laser safety acrylic on top and then just some uh, formed metal panels that make the, up the rest of the enclosure. So uh, some nice fire safety from that aspect. Um, the interior dimensions are roughly 28 by 28 and about 12 inches tall. So it does fit the K1 series. And if you have a laser that has that footprint, it might work as well, but they do have this cutout over here for the panel and the control box. And so you would have to deal with that because otherwise that's gonna be just an open hole if you're using this with another laser. Now the exterior dimensions are roughly just an inch bigger than all those. It's about 29 by 29 and maybe about 13 high if you include the camera up here. Um, you will have a little bit of extra length here with the panel sticking out and then there's an exhaust port on the side. So you can maybe roughly say it's closer to 32 by 32. Weight wise, I haven't weighed the whole thing because it kind of came in pieces. Um, the package was about 11 kilograms. I'm guessing this is about nine kilograms or roughly 20 pounds for the, uh, the enclosure as a whole. So it's durable, um, nice and fireproof, but it is uh, not terribly heavy compared to what you might DIY with some wood. Uh, I mentioned earlier, it does have a three inch exhaust fan on here. So that does uh, have a pretty high RPM on there. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it does have some built in exhaust. And then on this side, it does have some louvers for air inflow. Uh, they also do, as I mentioned, have a light burn compatible camera here up on top. And it does kind of center over the working area for the K1 series of lasers. Uh, other features are up front, they do have a couple of limit switches in these front corners so that when this panel goes down, it engages those. And if you do connect those to your board and uh, have the right firmware version, you may need to get that update from IKEA if you've got an older laser. Um, that will work as uh, kind of a safety feature. When the lid opens, it's gonna pause the operation until you close that again. So uh, those are the quick features of the laser. Um, let's talk a little bit about the unboxing and the build. So this came in a pretty good sized box and uh, went ahead and started to unbox everything. It was well packaged, uh, everything was safe. My one complaint is it used a lot of foam uh, and that's kind of one time packing material. It's not something we can easily recycle, it just ends up in the landfill. So I get that they want to have this arrive safely. We see a lot of our lasers and other machines packed with foam. I would just love to see that maybe used a little more sparingly and maybe more of the fill added with some cardboard that's far more recyclable. Once we got it all unboxed, I did take the, uh, there's protective film on all the acrylic panels. We got to get those out of the way. And then we start the assembly. Went ahead and the uh, metal panels kind of go together. There's a little bit of a kind of a latching system on the corners, and then you need to start screwing them in. Um, so I would suggest have one ready um, with the screw on the uh, Allen wrench and uh, get that first one started. Leave them just a little loose till you get them all together. Uh, just make sure that everything lines up okay. But then you just kind of work around the two sides in the back to get that assembled. 
From there, you do want to start then adding the acrylic panels, and those went in very nice. They're pre-drilled holes and pre-tapped. Everything lined up very well and seemed to sit nice and square to the other panels. Uh, and then at that point, we needed to actually start adding the brackets to the laser. Uh, and so those are going to attach on the front and the rear. You want to make sure that there's uh, the slotted ones versus just the straight holes. The slotted ones go on the back side of the laser and the hole ones just go up front. Now, before we slide the laser in, we want to make sure we get all the cables uh, for the lighting and the fans hooked up and routed out the back hole in the lower left corner. Uh, and then we can go ahead and slide that laser in and then start bolting on the front panel to the laser as well as the back panel for those brackets. Uh, and uh, once that's all done, we just need to start routing the rest of the wires. You want to, there's a three-way wire for power. You want to get every, all that moved through the grommet in the back. You want to get the air hose from the laser moved in through back uh, and get those hooked up. Now I did run into one issue with the limit switches for the door safety switches. Uh, that wire was just, just too tight. Um, I didn't want it to have that much strain. So I kind of had to undo one of them, uh, kind of reroute it over the top. And then I added one of the extra hose uh, kind of cable management clamps uh, that they include there, stuck that on the inside of the frame of the laser, everything stayed out of the way, uh, and that's working okay. But other than that, the build went pretty well. Their manual is pretty good. They just kind of glossed over some of the wiring steps and such. So just take your time, um, get everything connected up there, and you should be okay. You do want to make sure everything is sitting square and level. If there's any rocking in the laser, or things not lining up, maybe loosen up screws a little bit, make sure you're on a level flat surface, uh, let it set now, down nice and uh, level and square, and then re-tighten up all your screws. All right, so as far as the operation of the enclosure with this laser, uh, there's not a whole lot to test here. Uh, we did get that camera calibrated and light burn, so I ran a few tests with cutting and engraving, uh, and uh, just to make sure everything was working okay. And uh, everything seemed to work well. With any camera, you're gonna have a little variation when you get to the extent. So I would say it was maybe a millimeter off at most uh, when uh, after I've done the calibration. Um, my biggest concern, like I say, with this lid on a hinge, uh, if it doesn't sit down in the exact same spot every time, you may run into some issues where it's slightly out of calibration. But uh, in my tests, I ran a number of them over time. And uh, I'll show you this last one where I, I just engraved a few circles on a wide sheet of plywood. Um, like I say, the center was pretty spot on. And then the extents they were just out to uh, out just a little bit, uh, about a millimeter each way. So um, that is kind of typical of what you should expect with a single camera setup in these. Um, they're doing their best with the algorithm to make those adjustments, but it's never going to be 100% spot on across the entire working area. The lights work very well. I do like that they're along the sides. That way the gantry is never getting in the way of them if it moves over. Um, they're not overly powered. That's another thing I noticed is that in some of these enclosures, you get too much light and it just kind of blows out the camera view. Uh, seems to be a pretty good balance in this one that it's enough light, but not too much light. And, uh, and they just work. The air movement seemed pretty good. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there are louvers over on the side to kind of prevent the, the uh, reflected light from leaking out too easily. And it does kind of cause the air to come from the lower right front up to the upper left back where the the outlet is. So um, I wasn't sure how it was gonna work on this one uh, with just a three inch fan. I'm usually liking to see more of a four inch fan, but I did have this hooked up to uh, an atom stack version of the, the air purifier. Um, and uh, the, between the two, they seem to be uh, moving the smoke through pretty well, both on cuts and engraves. It wasn't really lingering in there. And that's gonna help keep your module clean and uh, also help keep the interior of the laser and everything clean by keeping that air moving. So they seem to have the pathing working pretty well on this one. I was pretty happy with that. All right, so let's uh, summarize the likes and maybe a few areas of concern on this. Starting with the likes, uh, like I said earlier, those dual light bars really illuminate the work surface well without blowing out the camera view. Um, that was nice to see. I've really struggled with that on a few others where you almost have to diffuse the, the light bars while doing the camera calibration and then sometimes it blows out the material as far as trying to see um, where it's gonna mark or not. So I think they've got a good balance here. Um, the top acrylic panels give a lot more visibility in this enclosure than some others. Um, you know, you get some of the fabric ones where it just has a window up on top or even the cloth fabric ones where it's not even necessarily uh, laser safe acrylic, 
Um, this seemed to be pretty good laser safe acrylic. It was blocking out the light fairly well. And uh, you have pretty much the full top and um, a little over half of this front. Uh, and so that is, uh, is a big bonus into visibility into this enclosure. Uh, and then also big thing with enclosures is making sure that air movement is going through properly. Um, this seems to handle that pretty well. Like I said, I had it paired up with that uh, air purifier. Um, so it was drawing some as well as the three inch high flow fan that they have built in the enclosure. It did seem to keep the uh, smoke moving. There's always a little bit that uh, hangs out in there just a little bit, but as long as the majority of it's moving through, you're doing a pretty good job. Now let's talk a little bit about some areas of concern or maybe where they could improve this a little bit better. Um, they do have that multi-tap power cord uh, that branches off into the controller and, and such, uh, the lights and the fan. And when you hit that switch, they all power on, including the fan. So the exhaust fan is always running. And since it's a smaller diameter fan and it's running at higher RPM, it does have a bit of a whine to it. It would be nice if that separate channel was on its own switch so that you could turn on the power to the laser and the lights, but only turn on the exhaust fan when you needed it. Uh, another thing I noticed is there are just some slight gaps in the front of the laser here, right on this curve and just a little bit where it meets the panel. Uh, I wasn't getting any like bright flashing, but when I did turn the lights off to kind of see, are we getting some light escaping? Um, you could see just a little bit there. So on the right angle, you're gonna get a little reflected light. Uh, so that's something to be mindful of, um, possibly just putting an extra little flange on here or something uh, so that it sits into it would, would be great. But uh, just something to be uh, cautious of, make sure everything's square, make sure that's as tight as possible and uh, try to maybe avoid any uh, viewing it from just kind of this quarter angle here. These are gets bolted into the frame and then there's really no provisions for taller items. So if you're using the leg extensions and the rotary, it's gonna sit up and now your enclosure has got a big gap on the bottom. So um, there's not necessarily gonna work well for taller items you need to place the laser above or wanting to use a rotary with it. Um, so just something to be mindful of if you're looking at this one and you do a lot of work with the rotary, um, you might need to build a box that this can set on uh, that then the rotary would be able to be down below and you'd still have full advantage of the enclosure. Now, let's talk a little bit about a DIY build. I've built a number of other enclosures uh, and I'll try to throw some images of them in here as we go, but typical DIY build. You're gonna start out with probably a full four by eight foot sheet of plywood. Um, you can get by with half inch uh, to help cut down on weight as well as uh, the cost, uh, but that's gonna run you probably about $50. Uh, now, if you want to add in a visible panel, uh, the cheapest uh, and the, the safest laser safe acrylic that is actually tested, I've found, uh, is about $50 for a 12 by 24 panel. So that'll give you one window maybe on the front of your laser enclosure versus kind of the front and the top here. Uh, you're not going to want to have just bare paint. You're going to want to seal it up, um, probably both for aesthetics, but also just so that it doesn't absorb all that smoke and odors. Uh, so there you're talking about another $15, $16. You need hinges for the lid, you need drawer handles, so there's another $15 or so. Um, LED light bars, you gotta have light in there. Now I've, I've done the, uh, the stick on strips, but you could also just buy a couple of regular 120 volt uh, LED like under cabinet bars. Those are gonna be roughly $20 a piece. You're probably gonna need at least two of them. There's another $40. Um, now you gotta worry about your air movement. So you gotta have both an inlet as well as an outlet. So a uh, four inch exhaust fan flange, those are usually about $5. Uh, the louvered air inlets, so that they're not just a straight pipe in, those are gonna run probably about another $10. And then uh, you're gonna need an exhaust fan. And a minimum that I run is a four inch exhaust fan. Uh, those are gonna be starting around $40 as well. To match some of the capabilities of this one, you're gonna want a light burn camera. Um, there's a variety out there, but the ones that uh, I like to use are tend to run about $50 out on Amazon. Uh, so you got to add that to the build. Uh, and then uh, there's things like some uh, USB cables, some grommets, uh, possibly uh, some other extension cables and such. So that's going to add a little bit more there, you know, another six to $10 as well. And I would add in just some, mis you know, there's going to be glue. There's going to be uh, maybe some nails or screws. You're going to have some miscellaneous hardware involved in this. So you can easily add another 25 or $30. So 
Uh, my rough estimate on of all of those items was about $325 to build something with similar qualities to this one. Uh, and uh, they're not, not even counting your time or the tools and the abilities to do it. I, I have access to a lot of tools in my shop, but you'd need at least a drill and probably a circular saw or a jigsaw to cut out your parts. Um, and of course, the, the more fancy tools, the easier that is. Now, the nice thing about doing a DIY build is you have some flexibility. You can make it taller if you want. As I mentioned earlier, I tend to add kind of a lower section there. Uh, the honeycomb can sit in, but you can pull that out if you need to use a rotary. Um, your air exhaust can actually go down through the honeycomb and out uh, from there. Uh, so you have some flexibility to really set it up the way you want. Uh, and uh, that uh, works well. But building a wooden enclosure, it's gonna be less fire resistant. I mean, wood by its own nature is gonna be more flammable than metal. Uh, and then just sticking with that uh, $50 panel of 12 by 24 laser safety acrylic, you're not gonna have as much viewing area from the outside, you're just gonna have one. So there, there are definitely some pros and cons to that, but obviously some ways that you can make this work whether you want to be DIYing it or buying the commercial one. But my point is the $390 does seem like a big expense up front. But when you compare it to trying to build your own comparable one, those things do start adding up. Now, there are ways to save money. You can, If you have scrap wood around, you can maybe use some of those offcuts to build it out. Uh, and you maybe have some paint on hand and maybe you've got a 3D printer and you can print up some of your louvers and handles and things like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to cost you $325. There's definitely ways to save that and maybe build it for less. But I tried to be pretty honest about all the extra little things you tend to add into those and uh, put them into the cost to do a fair cost comparison just to maybe make the thought of an almost $400 enclosure maybe not seem quite so out of the realm of reasonable price when you compare it to your time and the materials to build one as well. So I hope that's a decent overview of a commercial enclosure like this E2 for the K1 series from Ikea versus a DIY build. Um, there are definitely some perks to both. There's the kind of the efficiency of, you know, buy everything pre-made, ready to bolt together, 30 minutes, you're good to go versus having the flexibility uh, and maybe the cost savings of building it yourself. Um, both have positives, both have negatives to them. Uh, just thought I'd try to put it out there for you to consider as you're looking at enclosures. And uh, hopefully if you have the uh, K1 laser series and you've been looking at this enclosure, I gave you a decent enough overview of this to uh, make a better informed decision on that uh, for yourself. So if you're interested in this enclosure or the IKEA K1 series of lasers, I will have links down below where you can check those out in more detail. Uh, they uh, do have a nice uh, series of these in this uh, laser line. And uh, this one is nice. It has both the switchable 24 and 48 watt power, which I feel is really a sweet spot for diode lasers right now uh, and gives you some decent cutting capability as well as uh, dialing it back for a little more detailed engraving. So uh, always appreciate you using those links if I gave you some good information for you. It does help the company understand that uh, my uh, information has helped you with your purchase. I do get a small kickback as well in commissions. It just helps in purchasing materials and such to do more of these tests. But uh, as always, no pressure, just happy to share some information to make you a better informed consumer. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those down below. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to uh, respond to those, get some conversation going in that uh, field as well. And if you're new here, hey, consider subscribing. I do a lot of product reviews, projects, uh, tutorials, as well as Sunday nights. I do a live stream with my friend David over at the Clack Shack. We hop on here at 7 p.m. Central Time. And we talk a lot about lasers, but also CNC routers, 3D printers, uh, anything uh, related to general making and creating in our workshops, small business type or hobbyist. And uh, we answer questions live, have a good time with it. And I'd love to see you there as well. Anyway, I'll wrap this up. And if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Maybe hit that like button on the way out and uh, we will see you in a future video. But I hope that you get out in your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.